I'd uh, like to call this meeting of the Fairfield Board of Education regular meeting to order for June 13th, 2017. <laughs> Present at the moment is Mrs. Eileen Lee McCormick, Mrs. Jessica Gerber, myself, Philip Dwyer, Ms. Tricia Pitko. Uh, I keep wanting to say Mr. Calabrese. Mm -hmm. I'll get used to this. Mr. Nick uh, uh, Asa and Mr. John Llewellyn. Uh, Jennifer Maxson Canali is at a student event, so she will be joining us in uh, a after a certain bit. Uh, I've not heard from the other two, so we'll wait and see. If I could ask you to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, thank you. Uh, just a quick comment on the agenda before we move through it. Uh, we have three items that might uh, relate, uh, result in uh, extended board discussion, which would be the calendar adding the uh, professional development uh, time, uh, class size discussion, and the uh, items we're going to be placing on hold for the 17-18 budget until the state um, makes a final uh, decision on the state budget. Um, and so these, we, we ought to try and move through the agenda as quickly as possible to allow maximum amount of time for those three items. Um, and so the second comment I would make is generally we take uh, the class size is only on for discussion. No action is going to be taken tonight. So therefore, discussion items, generally the public will speak uh, at the beginning of the meeting. Um, but uh, I'm going to presume that you are all here for the food certification program. <laughs> <laughs> so some of you may wish to speak about class size, and you might prefer to listen to the presentation and to the board discussion and then speak on it. So I will allow anybody who wants to speak now so they can get on with the rest of their day to come forward and speak uh, at, the at the public comment section at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, but when it comes time for the class size discussion uh, at the end of the discussion of the board, if there's anybody that wants to come forward, um, I'll allow that as well. Uh, the chair has some discretion to, to um, modify those rules in the interest of public comment, so I'll I'll do that uh, in case any of you wish to choose that option. Um, so having said that, uh, we are now at public comment on uh, any item that's on our agenda. Does anybody wish to come forward and comment on any item on our agenda? And if so, please feel free to step forward and state your name and address. Please, and just come to the chair and speak into the microphone. Great. If you've not come here before, uh, I'll, re I'll say and remind you that we have a limit of three minutes, yes. which I uh, enforce equally on everybody. So uh, state your name and address. Great, wonderful. Thank you for having me. My name is David LaValle. My address is 1342 Mill Hill Road in Southport. Um, I am here as you uh, for the classroom size discussion. And um, and uh, thank you to several of your constituents, Jessica and Phil, for replying back to my emails, and me, uh, to Meg, your, your assistant, um, who did get back to me uh, as to this concern. So we, we moved to Fairfield, uh, bottom line is we moved to Fairfield five years ago. And the, the, so, the main number one reason we moved was for education. And when I understood and I, and I read, and Dr. Jones, I read your letter in terms of as a discussion, the possibility of inc increasing class sizes, um, it concerned me. And that's why I'm here, um, as well as probably dozens of other parents, to, to voice their concerns. Uh, just around the, the sheer topic of that discussion. I understand, Jessica, thank you for that detailed feedback today and email around some of the reasons why. And because of the, the budget issues that this is a precarious time, in terms of uh, for, for each town. However, the studies have shown that increasing class sizes is to the detriment of the education of, of, of for the students as well as to re in ar around teacher retention. My concern is not around that it, it will 
it will go it will um, spike to 35 my concern is is that any decision will set precedence for a continued trend in that direction so if we do one or two classes that have that go above that limit there's that there's then we set that precedent for future years that that can happen the challenge as I see it is around financial not oper a financial challenge and when you reflect back in business in 2008 the challenges in 2008 2009 that businesses faced organizations corporations faced was a lot around a lot around finances and, and financial concerns and if they didn't change if they weren't creative they were either out of business or they're bought up these are times where I believe in that in your leadership the leadership here needs to take to take creative actions uh, outside of increasing uh, classroom sizes it focus specifically around uh, finance there's a lot of different ways in terms of being creative I, I haven't heard and I haven't read around anything around specific fundraising pri fundraising through private private citizens through PTAs I know Mill Hill PTA fund alone has over fifty thousand dollars and I'm not saying go after you know focus in on that what I am saying is is this is a time to get creative and so I would invite you uh, encourage. three minutes is up thank you okay thank you <laughs> anybody else wish to come forward oh uh, uh, there was there's just one other rule <laughs> For, and there is one other rule I forgot to tell the gentleman um, on the same topic you can only speak once so if you choose to speak at the beginning of the meeting that doesn't you can't <laughs> then speak double jeopardy okay uh, a second time on the same topic sorry I didn't explain that before but you know um, my name is Joan Robb I'm a 30-year resident of Fairfield and a teacher at that infamous third grade section at Dwight um, of late I have found myself saying that if you haven't taught in the last four years you haven't taught between the endless assessing, the ever-changing curriculum, technology and systems, mountains of data collection and data entry, new initiative after new initiative, and the truly important work, which is what happens every day in the classroom with the teacher and his or her students. Elementary school teachers are dancing as fast as we can because we care deeply about providing the very best possible experience for each child in our class every year. We do this by getting to know our kids as learners and human beings and by working with each child wherever they are in their learning journey. Our students and meeting their individual needs, that's our priority. I am here tonight to ask this board and central office to cap elementary class at 23 for K to 2 and 25 for 3 to 5 and not move the line to allowing all classes to be won over before opening a new section. It's ironic that we've established a committee this year to deal with elementary teacher overload plates that are too full. A class of 25 is a challenge and certainly not ideal with the current expectations of both students and teachers. Adding additional students is akin to supersizing the plate. Next year in my grade we're losing an excellent teacher in spite of the fact that we have 53 enrollments. I received a class list today with 27 names on it. I've been told we will think about the sections in again in August. Unfortunately, the only thing that we seem to be thinking about now is the budget. There are things that are required of me that I grin and bear and do my very best to move forward with. I cannot grin for this one. You can ask any elementary teacher or parent if class size matters, but you probably don't need to because you can look around the room and you already know what they will answer. As you consider all the pending budget ramifications, please protect the long-standing class size recommendations as a top priority. In today's world of teaching and learning, they are more important than ever before. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, how many want to stay here till breakfast? How many want to stay here till breakfast? If you applaud, that slows everything down. So if I could ask you not to applaud and just let the speakers make their presentations. Thank you. Please step forward. I'm Monique Sudikoff from 472 Lockwood. And I wanted to talk about class size. But first, I wanted to take a moment and say thank you, because it has been such a challenging year. And for those of us who've been following, we know how closely you've been balancing the pressures that are coming from the state and the town 
and how creative you are with the scale. And um, I appreciate that. And I also appreciate the fact that you bring up the tough discussions and the tough topics mm -hmm. and the administrators and so forth. And I think that's the appropriate thing to be doing. Um, so thank you. Uh, but I do want to say that for me, as a resident of Fairfield, this is where I draw the line. I see the small class size as really the anchor on the scale between that balance of great school systems, that a great school system that people want to go to, and the, on the other side, keeping the town affordable and the taxes low. And when you chip away at the class size, you are removing that anchor of the scale. Um, my two kids are gone from elementary school, but they had amazing elementary school teachers, and it was the skills, the patience, <coughs> the um, bandwidth to deal with my very two wiggly boys. And when you start chipping away at the class size, you're chipping away at that anchor. And I just wanted to say before the conversation starts that for me, that's where the line is drawn. And again, I applaud you for all of the creative ideas. Um, but this is not one place to get creative. Um, and I understand that we're not talking about going from 25 to 30. But for me, when you start that 25 to 26, then you're going to have a harder time. There's going to be the ripples of dissatisfaction. And I've lived through it. You know, that session in the summer where you've got 74 kids, 75 kids, and you're hoping that a few either move away or a few move in. And then in, you know, August 15th, three move in and suddenly the, teach, the principal is scrambling for a new teacher, but she can find that new teacher because teachers want to come and teach in Fairfield and they're happy to sign up for a class of 19, even on August 25th. And when you start to chip away at that, you're really going to chip away at what keeps these schools wonderful. So again, thank you and thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Who else would like to come forward at this time? We, come, we operate on a first come first serve basis, so whoever gets to the seat first. Please state your name and address. Hi, I'm Hillary McCusker and it's 7 Lola Street. Good evening. Thank you for having me. My name is Hillary McCusker and I've been an elementary school teacher for almost 20 years. And I'm here to say that class size does matter. It matters a lot. In fact, I've always believed that it's everything. Now researchers might find this statistic or that statistic to say something differently, but take it from someone who's been on the educational front line for almost two decades. Less students equals greater education. When class sizes are down, I know my students better. When class sizes are down, I have more time for each student. When class sizes are down, I have a more powerful impact on each child. Please, don't try to rationalize that children will get the same quality of, of education with a larger class size. It won't be. Oh, what's one more student more or less? I'll tell you, it will make all the difference in the world. Thank you very much. Please come forward, state your name and address. Hi, my name is Jessica Kurtkowski. I live at 463 Half Mile Road. Um, I don't have anything prepared. I have never been to one of these meetings before, but I am the incoming Dwight PTA president because I love our school, and I love what the teachers have done for my daughter. Last summer, we were wondering if she would even be able to continue at Dwight because she had just not been getting it. Nothing was clicking. I didn't know if she had um, something wrong with her. We went to psychiatrist. We tried her on medication. And this year, because of the class size, she was able to get an individualized program. Her STARS report went from 22 percentile to 77 percentile in one year. She's been dismissed from all of her special help. Um, and I don't know, it just means so much to me. And I can't, I can't believe that if the class had been bigger that she would have gotten the attention that she needed and the room would have even looked different. Maybe they would have lost their reading corner. I can't imagine another table in their classroom. And I just am so passionate about our school and all the, all the things that our teachers do. And I, just, I just think that they should be able to continue that. And um, I would rather see some other things go if it could help preserve class size. Uh, that's all I have to say, but I'm just, it just really felt from the heart. I wanted to get up and tell you guys that, how proud I am of our teachers. Thank you very much. Please step forward. Oh. Um, good evening. Uh, 
Uh, my name is Erin Kleinman. Uh, I live at 225 Riders Lane. I'm also a parent at Dwight Elementary School. Um, I also work upstairs in this building for Save the Children and I lead strategic projects to help increase the impact we make for kids in the United States. And the kids I work to serve with Save the Children I know deal with really, really dire circumstances and certainly our kids here in Fairfield are pri privileged in every way by comparison. So I'm really of two minds on this issue because what I fight for every day is often kids who are fighting to just get to school or to have a teacher at all for, you know, a class size of 25 would be a gift. Having said that, because I pay taxes here in Fairfield and my husband and I chose to live here, I really want to advocate for the best I possibly can for my two boys. And similar to Ms. Grakowski, Mrs. Grakowski, I have a uh, boy in the infamous section of second grade that may be splitting to just two sections of third grade. Um, he is a fighter and a very successful, thriving uh, contributor to the Dwight community, but he hasn't always been. Um, and in fact, repeated the first grade and uh, has an ADHD diagnosis and a 504 plan. And let me tell you, I cried this year at my uh, back to school night with his current teacher because I kept just waiting for the shoe to drop and for there to be bad news and for there to be the thing he was fighting for. And instead, she was telling me that he was thriving. And I credit that teacher and I credit Dwight, but I also credit the fact that he was in a group of 15 or 16 kids and every element that was in his 504 could be easily met and he could really thrive and succeed. My last comment is that my other student at Dwight is in the kindergarten this year where three new families moved in during the year. And so by the end at the class party, I think there are 23 kindergartners in that classroom. And let me tell you, it's a wild scene and really, really hard for that teacher. And God bless her, she's a gift. But I feel like many teachers would have failed. And I think if my son, who is now a rising third grader, were a student in that very large kindergarten section, his situation might be far worse than it is today. So I know it's hard to get creative, and I know these choices are very, very difficult, but please consider other options besides increasing class size so that our kids can still succeed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, as you come up, I wonder if I could, no, come, come on up. Uh, Tom, there are about at, at least six people standing. I don't know whether there are any other chairs anywhere, but you might uh, see if you can't find some. And, if, and if, you, if there's a chair next to you that's available, let people know so they don't have to stand in the corner. So please, state your name and address. Well, my name is Raina Holinsky. I am a fourth grade teacher at Dwight Elementary. I live in Trumbull, but I'm a teacher here in Fairfield. This is my 11th year at Dwight, and my 15th year as a classroom teacher. I'm speaking in regard to class size. I understand absolutely that projections are helpful to determine budget costs. However, I'm concerned that they have now trumped the Board of Ed's suggested size of 25 in grades 3 through 5. So as Mrs. Robb had mentioned, currently Dwight has two sections slated for third grade, one that has 26 and one that has 27. And this is just well over the recommendation. The actual numbers enrolled should lead the sections, not the budget projections. Sadly, communication has already been sent out that a teacher is being floated. It seems premature since enrollment is already there, and we're not waiting to see if that one kid will put us over the edge. While I still feel that class sizes of 25 is too large, it should be respected as a standard that is not new and has been adhered to in all of my 11 years here at Fairfield. I ask that you please reconsider using the budget projections to determine class sections and focus on actual number enrolled to reinstate the third grade classroom at Dwight before the end of the year. There is no need to float this teacher. In the meantime, I'd like to invite any of you, all of you, to my classroom. <laughs> and <laughs> upon doing so, I'd like you to see how it would function uh, and imagine a class of 25 or 26 or 27. Um, Take away the proven statistics of lower class sizes and increase academic achievement for a minute and think about the day-to-day -day things that might be taken for granted. I will add nine to 10 desks to my already crowded classroom. To do so though, I will need to remove my small group table along with my reading area and library, which would be devastating. Forget about alternate seating for kids who just can't sit in a chair all day long. There's really not gonna be room for my rug either, so I'll have to take that out along with any space for additional computers. Adding in this many more students also adds additional meetings that take time away from delivering instruction, along with medical issues such as asthma or EpiPen allergies that add to the teacher's responsibility. 
Perhaps you'll be, be able to witness a lockdown where hiding 27 students and myself in a corner is not only impossible, but will leave six or so students visible and vulnerable. But then again, since I removed the rug and the bookcases for desk, spa desk space, we'll all be visible. Transition time from place to place will be near doubled, which will further decrease instructional time. I really felt that Fairfield was a district that put their students first before anything else. An increase in class size really takes away from that. Please consider what such large class sizes would do to our community, our passion as teachers, and our strong academics in Fairfield. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else at this time wish to come forward to either talk about class size or any other item on the agenda? Uh, seeing none, thank you very much. So let's move through our agenda. Um, the first item on our uh, business item is, uh, excuse me, is approval of the computer science principles course. And the recommended motion is that the Board of Education approve the computer science principles course. Do I have a motion? Mrs. Gerber, followed by Ms. Pitko. Uh, shall we defer to the staff, or do you want to make a yeah, comment? The staff is okay. what, uh, any staff want to make any additional comment? I don't think so. Any uh, dis uh, discussion or uh, questions from board members on the computer science principles course? that was presented at the last board meeting and is here for a vote. Go ahead. Um, I don't know if this would be to, is Dr. Boyce here? Oh. Well, to is the superintendent any? and okay. she'll call um, for a lifeline. All right, through, through the chair to uh, Dr. Jones. Um, I was just curious to see, um, you know, I, I looked at the, the um, the website that um, is tied into the curriculum, and I was just curious about the opportunities for professional development, um, if there were any specific things that the teachers were going to be taking advantage of. Um, and there was one, actually, I think, that provides a stipend to the teachers, so I didn't know if through that IP? was... P? Is it through IP? Through the C, uh, mobile csp.org? Yeah, I'm, I'm unclear about that. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. This is one teacher that has brought this proposal forward. Right. Yeah. Okay. And who, and who will teach the course? Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. So we can get you the answer after, after okay. the meeting. We don't, okay. I guess she doesn't have the answer right now. Okay. And so I guess it probably wouldn't be other answers to because I had a few other questions as well. Well, I guess just in terms of the Walter Fitzgerald students, are, will they have the opportunity to be able to sign up for this, do we know? Or? Well, I mean, I would think if it's offered at Ward and we can get a student to take the course there, absolutely. Okay. And I guess also just in terms of will there be, like, collaboration between the two schools? Um, between Ward and Ludlow? Between Ward and Ludlow. I think the idea is in, in they were willing to run the class, remember, at both high schools. They just didn't have the interest. Right. So, yes, they'll continue to collaborate and work together. Okay. All right, so it's just going to be at one high school. Yes. Okay. Just because because we weren't enrollment. clear on the number. I wasn't clear on the numbers, and I, I thought that someone was going to get back to me on that, so um, I wasn't sure about that. Um, okay, and then I just have another question about the website, but um, okay. Other board members have questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Patton. Just following up on what Ms. Gerber said, has the projected enrollment changed from the last meeting? Not that I'm aware, but Meg would, um, Boyce would have to answer that. I don't, I don't know that they've even asked. You know, until the course is actually approved, maybe they will actually recruit a little bit more, but that I'm not sure Because I know schedules are yes. kind of tentatively done yeah. for, for next year. And Correct. do you have any ballpark idea what the enrollment was for Lolo that we couldn't hold the course? I just know. I think it was less than 10. It was very small. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Uh, this is okay. We'll go to the public. On uh, voting items, we go out to the public prior to the vote. So is there any member of the public that wish to come forward and talk about the uh, computer science principles course that is being added? Seeing none, back to the board. Are we ready for a vote? All in favor that the Board of Education approve the computer science principle course, please raise your hand. It is unanimous with the current people present. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Thank you very much. Um, we have uh, two policies that are uh, be up for adoption. We'll take them one at a time. That the recommended motion is that the Board of Education adopt policy 5144.1, students' use of physical force. Do I have a motion? Ms. Pitko, do I have a second? Mrs. Gerber? 
Uh, Ms. Pitko, do you wish to make any comments? Uh, the first comment I want to make is we put a new copy down with the appropriate pages on it. So there was one provided for you in your Friday packet, but um, 5144.1 has the accurate pages on it. So we will be voting not on the one that says enclosure number one, but voting on the one that was is at your table that has no uh, enclosure number on it. I did receive an email from uh, Mrs. Max and Canelli. She said that she didn't get any questions from the board. Um, she wanted to point out, starting on page two, under conditions pertaining to, that the, um, the items were reordered to tell more of a clear story and the layout of the policy, um, especially noting letter B, which was moved up. Uh, important to note, this makes it clear that anyone untrained should not be adding physical restraint or placing a student in seclusion. And then um, under letter G on page three, she said it should be page C. Um, the first two lines were rewritten. And then a note on page four about required training will shortly need to be changed. The state statute has already been approved. Um, from some like enormous mandate. Okay. Um, uh, this is a policy that is required that we approve before I think the end of the year, correct? Yes. Yes. Questions from the board on the uh, policy 5144.1A? I guess it's kind of a question comment. I, there's no red line of this one, highlighting the changes versus the prior, or at least not the one I have. Um, but I think most of my comments were incorporated, so yes. I want to thank you. And, and I think they're all there. If you're aware of any that weren't, no, I know we addressed all the ones that you brought up. Thank you. And over the summer, if you find something not quite right, bring it up. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> things can always come back on the agenda. Any other questions from board members? Uh, Mrs. Lou McCormick, followed by Mr. Patton. Can I ask on C, or are we just on the first page? Uh, you mean B on, on item G I five one four four point one. Any question on that uh, that policy? C. Yeah. So I'm on the third page um, for item G. The w um, the first sentence where you said it was rewritten for clarity, I believe, right? I guess my question is, when it says a reasonable effort shall be made to provide the student's parent guardian with notification immediately after such physical restraint or seclusion is initiated, however, this notification must occur not later than 24 hours after the student is placed in physical restraint or seclusion. So I guess my question is, is when they say 24 hours, we're not talking about the same school day. So if it happens that same school day, in fact, the parents may not know that the event has occurred until the next day. And just thinking as a parent myself, I might be pretty upset if I didn't find out the same school day that my child was put in physical restraint or seclusion. So I'm wondering if that 24 hours actually is meaning the same school day that it occurs. And or if we're deliberately saying within 24 hours, meaning that it could be the next day or possibly even the following school day if we're just talking about school hours. Did that come up for discussion? No, it did not. Um, I know that these come from CABE. So uh, through the chair to Mr. Coyne, I don't know if you want to speak on that, but I don't, we didn't discuss that. I'll say, no, if you're going to come speak, you should come forward because um, you enjoy doing that. Um, frequently, the time frames, Mrs. Lou McCormick, that are mentioned in policy come from legislative action, so we comply with the law by complying with their time frames. But Mr. So, uh, statutory language is uh, where that came from, the minimum of 24. So I guess my question to the board is, is do we want to just stick with statutory language and allow the possibility that the parents may not be notified in a day, possibly even two days, depending on when it occurs? Um, or do we want to um, change it and just say same school day? They will be notified within the same school day that the event occurs. Well, except that that's not always possible. The, par like the parent sometimes cannot be reached during that time so you can you, know, you can make it policy but can't always 
um, comply with the policy if the parent is unreachable. So that, you know, it's a, it's a practical matter uh, that does occur from time to time. So I guess when it says notification, does it mean that we have to reach them or is leaving a text message or a voicemail or something, does that suffice as us having fulfilled our obligation? Because I guess it just concerns me they don't even try for a full day until the next day. So if it occurs, you know what I'm saying? We have until the following day in the afternoon. Well, you're, except for the introductory statement there that a reasonable effort will be made to contact the parent immediately upon the student being placed in seclusion or restraint. So it starts, the contact starts as soon as the event happens. You know, the attempt to contact starts as soon as the event happens is how the policy uh, reads. Okay, it's just not required. It says a reasonable effort shall be made. It's not required. It's not that. The effort is required, absolutely. I'll leave that to the board. Okay. If, if the board is Mr. happy Patton? with that, then we can yeah. leave it as is. Yeah. Um, I brought this up last time, and I think you, you had started to uh, mention this, Ms. Pitko, but uh, the whole uh, training aspect, um, is now on page it's, uh, second to last page. Um, just in gen just in general, uh, as an unfunded mandate, um, I asked before what the if we could find out what the cost would be, and did we actually get that information? I do not have the cost information. Okay. I don't know how much. I don't know if we're doing in-house training. I don't know if anybody else on staff is it in-house now. We're training the trainer model. So we're, we're equipped now, which means it costs us zero as far as uh, paying a consultant to come in. It takes staff time. Okay, so right now we're pretty sure that other than taking staff away from the classrooms and whether it's substitutes or, or just juggling teachers we have, around. We have a trainer in-house. Yes, we've been providing the training for several years in-house. And in general, um, maybe a... Uh, uh, mm -hmm. I was going to say principal, um, <laughs> assistant superintendent Coyne. Um, uh, you could elaborate on, on what we've done in the past with this sort of thing in terms of how much staff time. Like, in other words, like, do we have substitutes come in? Is it? Well, is it and can I ask this, it, the question this way? Is this done during professional development day time? Uh, there have been several uh, different approaches. Some of it is done during uh, PD time. Uh, there are other times when workshops are offered during the school day and we provide substitutes for teachers uh, or people that need the training. So it's done both ways. So it's anticipated based on past history that we would probably have some expense in terms of substitutes? Uh, I would assume so. Okay. It depends how the professional development calendar is structured, and I can say that we are working on the district calendar for next year to have as little impact to the school district um, as possible. And that's another item that's on here tonight is are those four early release days. That's one of the reasons those are so important because then it doesn't cost us anything when we can use our professional development time. I would also point out that the recent legislation that was passed last week has reduce the number of people that are have require that require mm -hmm. training so they have they have from what to what I'm sorry I don't okay. have the details I just know that they have reduced mm -hmm. it you okay. know it was going to be everybody. everybody right so they've cut it back significantly okay Any thank other you questions the board members who have questions uh, and, uh, and I'll assume that Ms. Pitko will handle both the first and the second policy to give uh, the chair a breathing a space for breath. Any other questions from board members on this policy or any other comments that people wish to make? Seeing none, I'll go out to the public. Um, uh, this is a voting item, so any member of the public that wish to comment on the adoption of policy 5144, uh, 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 use of physical force, please come forward. Nancy Haberly, Fairfield resident. Um, I agree with Ms. Lou McCormick. I think um, it's very important to notify the family. And this language says reasonable effort. And I understand that, but 24 hours is far too long. 
I would not be happy if I heard on Tuesday that my child was secluded or police were called or something was happening. I think that's um, vital to trust in the school district. So I just I thank you for bringing that up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other member of the public wish to come forward? Mm. Seeing none, back to the board. Are we ready for a vote? Um, all in favor of the motion that reads the Board of Education adopt policy 5144.1, students' use of physical force, please raise your hand. It is unanimous with eight people here. Thank you. Uh, the second policy that is up for vote is uh, the recommended motion is that the Board of Education adopt policy 4112.5 slash 4212.5 personnel certified non-certified security check fingerprinting. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Seconded by Mrs. Maxon Canelli. Uh, any comments that you wish to make, Ms. Pitko? Okay, so looking at the policy, um, once again, Mrs. Maxson Kelly didn't read it, receive any questions prior to the meeting. The first five words of the first shaded box were changed, uh, consistent with Mr. Llewellyn's suggestion. Although the policy committee understands the criminal checks were to include fingerprinting, we were fine with adding that language as well. And unless anyone has any, I don't know if Ms. Maxson Kelly has any additions, that's all I have. Any other comments that, uh, uh, Jennifer, that you would want to make as a no. member of the policy committee? Questions from the board, Mr. Llewellyn. Uh, I, I do have actually a question about the fourth paragraph. One of the comments I had made is that uh, district, the way it reads is district employees shall within 30 days after they are hired submit to a check, so on and so forth. Um, I have a big problem with waiting 30 days after a hire to submit to the criminal record check. Uh, I believe that that submission should be uh, either with the application, in which case it's understood in writing that, that it will not occur unless there's an offer made, or uh, clearly it should be done at least by the time they, they hand in their new hire paperwork, uh, filling out the W-2, whatever else needs to happen. Uh, Given the past, the checkered past uh, of, of some of the issues we've had in the district, uh, I don't think anyone on this board should be comfortable waiting 30 days for a background check to be signed off on to occur, let alone to have occurred. A background check is electronic today. It's almost instant. If not, it's within a couple of days. Uh, I say that uh, it has to all occur before an employee can start. So th that's my comment. I'd like to hear what others have to say before I make a motion. Okay. Uh, do you want to ask Ms. Leffert sure. to come forward? Sure. Ms. Leffert. You wish to come forward and comment on uh, Mr. Llewellyn's comment. And please state your name and position. Ann Leffert, Director of Human Resources. Um, fingerprinting is required upon hire. It is part of the hiring packet. So when I met with the, hi the uh, new hires that I've met with already, they um, have the fingerprint. We've gotten most of them back. Um, it is something that we require, and it is part of a W-2, W-4, I-9, DCF, all that kind of stuff. So it's required. Um, as they meet with me, they get that paperwork and take care of the fingerprints. And a comment on generally how long it takes for the firm that we use to get it back? Um, it goes to the state police. Um, and so uh, once we get the fingerprints, they go directly up to the state police. My office takes care of sending that back. The um, staff members need to bring the fingerprint cards to us. There is a fee. That gets sent up to the state. And you know we are at the mercy of the state. Um, it's, it happens as quickly as one week and takes as long as three or four weeks. So it really depends on how many they're getting at any one time. Other questions or comments from the board? Mr. Asa. Just to follow up on that, <clears throat> I believe Mr. Llewellyn's talking about the criminal background check, so you're tying that in with the fingerprinting? Yes. Or? We're required um, to do the fingerprint check, and the, the response that I understand from the last board meeting was that they wanted it explicitly to say fingerprints. We are required by statute to do fingerprints, and we also do a background check through DCF. So those are the background check, the fingerprints um, and the DCF check. First, Mrs. Lou McCormick, followed by Mrs. Maxson-Canelli. 
So can you give me a clarification? It says um, that they shall within 30 days after they are hired. So is that is that 30 day window sufficient before they actually step foot inside a classroom or inside a school so that if something should come back that we can then get rid of the contract before they have actually entered? So it depends on when they're hired, but that um, shall submit within 30 days after they are hired a statutory language. We require it the minute I meet with them. So when they're doing all of their hiring paperwork, they are required to get the paperwork for fingerprints and get those done. We give them lots of options on how to get them done and that they have to get them to us um, as quickly as possible. So, so what's our recourse? Let's say it comes back and they actually have a criminal record. So What's then our we, recourse? We would follow up on that depending on what the criminal record shows. We have a very low return on that, very, very few, a handful um, over so. the five years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, um, so typically what we see are very minor kinds of things. So depending on what the offense was, if there was any kind of um, felony, um, that leads to immediate um, um, suspension. Um, with pay, we put on paid administrative leave until we find out what the um, what the issue is. So we would not um, have anyone remain in a position if a fingerprint comes back. So, but they're, we're already paying them, Correct. so they go on paid leave before we. So I guess mm -hmm. my concern is is wouldn't it be great if instead of having to pay them while we figure out what to do with them once we find that there's a problem, instead we're not even letting them into so the district. So that would be great, um, except if I hire 30 people at the end of August, I'm keeping 30 people out of a classroom um, with a very low likelihood of anything coming back. And as I told you, we've had um, really almost no issue through fingerprint background checks. We get almost nothing back through the fingerprints. Um, as far as the teacher ranks go, I can't remember in five years any teacher's fingerprints coming back um, with a hit on them. Um, so uh, I would be strong, I would, I've had a strong concern. We're following statute. We are getting the fingerprints done um, right away. That's part of the hire packet. Um, we follow up with a DCF check. We also have an option as it gets closer to the end of the school year, we can do something called a LexisNexis check, which does do a criminal history check and we get that back quicker. So we will institute that for folks who we're not going to get fingerprints back right away. So can we put something in the contract that says that if in fact there is some whatever, criminal event on their record that they do not go on un, uh, paid leave? That you, I can't that's would, uh, it. you can't do that in the contract. It would be unwise to talk Correct. about a negotiating position in public, <laughs> well. especially since the contract is coming up for discussion this well, I fall. guess I just want to understand the feasibility because, you know, it doesn't require us to then change our policy if it's not possible for us to then prevent that situation and now we have a bad situation and we're paying them. Right. So we've got two I, bad I things going I on. I fully understand your concern. Nobody um, sitting around this table here or in central office wants to have anyone in who has a criminal background check. The fact that we can do something that's a little bit quicker before the actual fingerprints come back um, helps us out. Um, so that is a process. It's a $5 charge to us. It's not a huge deal that we can put something in place temporarily while we're waiting for the fingerprints to get back, but we're following statute. Um, I'm comfortable with what I've seen in five years in this office. Um, uh, so there are other measures that we can take as well. Um, criminal stuff doesn't hide very well. <laughs> I have one more comment. So sure. is, would it make sense then to add that requirement to make sure it actually occurs prior to every hire that when in fact we spend the five dollars to do the LexisNexis or whatever? That's your shorter. choice as far as the board what you um, want to discuss. Uh, any other board members have a comment? Any? Uh, yeah, you've already spoken, so let me see if there's any other board members first. Do we have any? Uh, Mrs. Maxine Canale. Um, it, it, and I, I'm actually reiterating Ms. Leverett's point that she already made in terms of the statutory language and being consistent with that. And, um, and also the reminder, I mean, this is a perfect uh, tie-in to when we're talking about class size. I mean, so oftentimes if we're talking about a class size change that occurs August 20th, which then results in a bump up of an entire new section, um, what we're talking about, I mean, what was bounced around a little bit, obviously we're now on to a slightly different topic, but um, I don't think we want to keep that teacher out of the classroom considering what an extremely low percentage come back reflecting any issues um, that we're talking about then having a substitute in for those students um, until we get going. And so that was, I mean, it is a topic that we talked about and if this is something that was flagging at all as being we need to ha show greater precaution, you know, there are certain things where I trust in the staff on them and this is one which it has not been an issue. Um, Mr. Llewellyn makes a, a 
not veiled reference to a, a checkered past. There have been very, very few incidents, and those that have didn't come up wouldn't have been flagged according to this anyway. Um, so it's I am comfortable with the wording as is. I would not look to change it. Mr. Llewellyn. Uh, I'd like to make a motion, please. Uh, my motion will, uh, we're going to strike within 30 days after hiring, and then I'm going to add something to the end of the sentence. At the end of the sentence, I would like to uh, insert, at the time they complete uh, new hire paperwork. I mean, is that a, you have new hire paperwork? Correct. Okay. So, you know, from what I heard from Ms. Lefford is, we don't even do it this way. We don't need 30 days to return the paperwork. So it's kind of a moot point here. Uh, there is a separate point, which is, is actually the hiring uh, and doing the electronic search. But I don't think we need 30 days to turn in the paperwork. So the corrected sentence will read, uh, district employees shall submit to state and local criminal checks, which include fingerprinting, at the time they complete their new hire paperwork. Is there a second to that? Uh, Mrs. Lou McCormick, uh, do you wish to make any further comment or have you commented? Oh, I think, uh, you know, Ms. Lovett helped us tremendously there in saying that they don't even do it this way anyway, so we don't need to leave those 30 days to uh, sign a form. Mrs. Lou McCormick, you seconded it. Any comment? Uh, I agree. Okay. Other board members? Mrs. Maxson Canelli. Um, just so I can seek some clarification. So if an employee is hired in a meeting that takes place on a Friday afternoon, um, that the meeting would take place uh, first through the chair to Mrs. Leffert, um, would that meeting be taking place in the school itself or here at central office? For hiring? Yes. Here at central office. Okay, so here at central office, as this paperwork is getting done, do we then immediately do the fingerprinting here? We do not. So that immediately we would then be in violation of our policy with the very first hiring we make. Most fingerprints, I will tell you, are not done um, immediately. If someone lives um, in Meriden and they're commuting down here, they might elect to go to Meriden to get Meriden to get their fingerprints done. It might take a week for them to be able to get into Meriden, depending on their schedule. Um, so we require the paperwork to come back. The 30 days is the statutory language. Um, we can't require that someone go immediately. The Fairfield Police Department is not is only open Tuesdays and Thursdays to do fingerprints and Saturday mornings. So somebody hired um, on a Monday um, wouldn't be able to go in that day. So it's not an immediate. Thank you. I just think it sounds like a bad practice. I'm, I am happy with the existing language because it doesn't say wait 30 days. It says within 30 days, which means it allows for that little vagary that um, uh, was just mentioned. Any other comments on the amendment and the amendment only? Any other comments on the amendment and the amendment only? If not, then we'll go to the public. Um, this is a voting item. Uh, we take comments on... Uh, the amendment and then uh, we get back to the main motion either whether it's amended or not and then take comments on the main motion so if you wish to comment on the amendment and the amendment only please come forward uh, no one so oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, oh I'm sorry busy tonight. it's a, a lot of people here please sorry. state your name and address Suzanne Mesca 123 Rygate Road um, all, I, uh, all I'm hearing is that we've got a policy and a process that don't align with each other. We have a statutory situation, and then we have a process that we follow. If, if one could now you know, be more symbiotic with the other, I think that would be helpful. I think the amendment to the amendment that is allowing us to set a shorter time period or something that you know incorporates LexisNexis or something that you know as a parent you want to know that the person who's running your classroom and while I appreciate we haven't had a huge thing I'd like that track record to ma be maintained you know as a parent you need to know that these things are in place so that there is even a smaller option of zero so I think if we this would bring the process and the policy together that would be helpful thank you thank you any other member of the public wish to come forward and comment on the amendment in the amendment only if not back to the board any further comment are we ready for a vote um, and it's um, uh, crossing out within 30 days after they are hired and at the end of the sentence can finish the sentence uh, and did you write it down yeah please read read the addition well, I'll just read the full sentence Fair as enough. amended. District employees shall submit to state and national criminal checks at the time they complete their new hire paperwork. 
And of course, district students. I'm sorry, which include fingerprinting. I apologize. Yeah, district employees shall submit to state and national criminal checks, which include fingerprinting, at the time they complete their new hire paperwork. Okay. Any questions from the board as to what we're voting on? The amendment and the amendment only. All in favor of the amendment, please raise your hand. Ms. Lou McCormick, Mr. Llewellyn, uh, all opposed? Patton, uh, Mrs. Gerber, Mr. Dwyer, Ms. Pitko, Mr. Asa. Uh, Mrs. Maxson Canelli, the motion uh, fails two to six. Uh, back to the main motion, um, which is the policy as presented to us. Any uh, further comment on that? If not, I'll go to the public for comments on the main motion. So, therefore, uh, comment on any part of the policy that is being voted on. See nobody coming forward, so back to the board for a vote. All in favor that the Board of Education adopt policy 4112.5 slash 4212.5 personnel certified non-certified security check fingerprinting. I already started reading the motion, but I will defer. Please ask your question. It's less of a question, but I'd like to suggest an amendment. If it's on the same subject, um, we generally don't take amendments that are on the same subject, just using different words. So I assume it might be somewhat different. I wanted to make a um, amendment for relating to the requirement for a Lexus Nexus or some sort of a criminal. No, that's a different amendment. It's a different amendment, right? Okay. So make it. I will. I need to compose it since I'm doing it right now. Um, so we have within 30 days, all right, so district employees, no, the district shall conduct a Lexus Nexus, is it criminal report? I'm not sure what the right term is, Lexus Nexus criminal report, background check. check prior to hiring a new employee. Does the secretary Period. have the uh, wording? So where do you want that wording placed? Um, we can put that right in front of the first sentence of the fourth paragraph. So before the sentence that we were just trying to amend. Okay, so before the sentence district employees, you want a new sentence, mm -hmm. which is what you just read. You want me to read it again? Would that be helpful? Uh, I'll have the secretary uh, read it. Okay. District shall conduct a LexisNexis background check prior to hiring a new employee. Is there a second? Mrs. Mr. Llewellyn, do you wish to make any further argument for it? Uh, my argument really is is that I'm a conservative individual and I would prefer to put something in place that prevents, um, that kind of preempts anything. Even though we ha have not had a bad history, the fact that the language leaves it open that we could, I don't see why we wouldn't want to close it up. If this helps and this is one more precautionary item and it helps and it's policy and it's applied, then hopefully we never have an incident in the district. Any other comments the board members wish to make? Mr. Asa. I think we need to be careful here in narrowing the scope of specifically stating a Lexus Nexus or whatever it is. It sounds like the office is doing this already. Um, and I'm just afraid, well, I understand what you're saying. I'm afraid at making it so specific that what happens if that service goes away and we have to use a different service? We're really narrowing ourselves down with the wording that you've suggested. Um, so. Mr. Patton, followed by Mrs. Maxson Canelli. I agree with Mr. Asa. I think that um, it's too restrictive, and any time we try and, um, as we always say, reword policies on the fly at board meetings, it, it never ends well. I think this is a significant enough change that we would, or at least I personally would like the staff to do some research and the policy committee maybe do some research if we want a background check thrown into the policy. Uh, then I think that's something that should be discussed between the policy committee and the staff. I don't think that we should do that here because I think that we don't know enough or have any information about this Lexis, 
Lexus Nexus um, company and what they do and what other other companies do and et, et cetera. Well, I'm not going to debate that here at the table right now, so I'm not in favor of changing the wording as it is. Mrs. Maxson Canelli. I'd also like to point out that this is so much not an issue and has not been an issue that no one has requested this policy review. This policy review is coming before us because the FBI required it. Um, this is wording that is put in because we are, that all districts in Connecticut have an impending audit. And that is the only reason we're even looking at this policy. That's how much of a, this has not been an issue in this district, this is. That's how much our human resources um, people who are doing that work have been on top of this uncovering if there are any issues, but it has not been an issue at all. Um, and so again, I'm in favor of them continuing with their practice. And um, so, and that, and I, oh, I do also agree with those points of, of trying to restrict this that much. Um, we have a process in place that is working. And I don't want to put anything into place then that we could have problems with policy versus practice. What we're doing is working. Any other comments before I go to the public? Um, so hmm? you have a co final comment. Yeah. My final comment is, is um, I recognize um, the comment about the Lexus Nexus and how a company can go away. So the specificity, perhaps, of a name being um, specifically mentioned within the policy perhaps could be amended. Um, so rather than put together the wording right now, I'd like to leave it with the policy committee because I actually believe that it should be considered further. And um, perhaps we should craft something with staff that kind of addresses the concern because it seems kind of odd that we would conduct a criminal check after someone is hired rather than before. So there's something a little backwards about that. And if we can close that gap, I think that would make good policy for the district. Are you suggesting that you're withdrawing your amendment or are you wanting us to act on your amendment? No, I, I'm withdrawing the amendment with the hope that they can craft something that is more the kind of suitable. The amendment belongs to the board. Is unanimous consent to withdraw the amendment? Uh, so ordered. So we're back to the main motion, which we could approve this policy. And, and if uh, Mrs. Lou McCormick wanted to go to the policy committee and say, I still have an idea that I'd like you to consider, that's, that's an option open to you. So you the motion was open or wasn't? I apologize. It's open. Yeah, any board member can right. ask the policy committee a, a question. So the motion on the table is that the Board of Education adopt. I won't read the whole thing again. Uh, any member of the public wish to comment on the uh, on the uh, main motion, which is any aspect of policy 4112? Please state your name and address. Lisa Davey, Fairfield, Connecticut. Um, I just heard Ann say a couple of times DCF, so I just was looking for a point of clarification where it says submit to state and national crime checks. Am I correct that DCF is Department of Children and Families? So is there more to that as, as a policy? Uh, um, somebody who comes to these meetings frequently, you know that we entertain comments, but we don't I understand. A dialogue. I understand, Mr. No. Dwyer, but that is my question yep. about yep. the policy. Thank you. Any other member of the public wish to come forward? Okay, back to the main motion. Uh, does the board understand the motion that's in front of us? Mr. Llewellyn. I'd actually like an answer to that question, please. I'd like to understand DCF being the state of Connecticut versus the state and federal. Do we go to just DCF or beyond? You're asking out of the superintendent? Through the superintendent to whomever you choose. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Ann Leppert, Director of Human Resources. We have some requirements when we're hiring staff. We run a um, search through the Department of Children and Families to see if there has been any um, previous uh, um, claim and substantiation of abuse, neglect, or sexual misconduct mm -hmm. um, with a child under the age of 18. And we also have to submit to the um, Connecticut State Department of Education the name of all of our teacher and administrator hires to see if any of them have had their certification revoked. That's a statute that was passed in, in effect as of July 1, 2016. Okay. Who's going to? Yeah. Thank uh, you. You finished, Sean? Yep, go ahead. 
I just want a little elaboration on what you just said. Um, I believe you said it was past 2016, if I heard. The one, yes. The would you mind, <coughs> excuse me, would you mind repeating that, please? Yep. We have a new statute um, that is different from this policy. We're talking about fingerprints and criminal background checks. We have a statutory language that went into effect July 1, 2016, that we have to do employer um, verification forms for every staff member that we hired who may potentially come in contact with children. It's not just teachers. Um, we have to verify with previous employers where they work with children, were they ever the subject of an investigation into abuse, neglect, or sexual misconduct? Were they ever disciplined for such, or were they, did they ever lose a license or certification for the same? Um, so that goes to every employer that they've had um, where they had contact with children. That's a different um, requirement than what you have before you tonight. Uh, <coughs> I, excuse me, I think that's part of my confusion. I sat with the policy committee and we discussed this at great length. But I'm, and this is for, I'm going to stick with the teachers because that's part of this. What is the other, if I'm following you, is this piece, but what are the other criteria we do in terms of background check for the teachers? So for all of our staff, we do um, fingerprinting. Can we just stick to the teachers for a second? Well, I'll say all because it's the same. So we, um, all teachers, all staff that we hire, we do a fingerprint check. We do a check through the Department of Children and Families. Um, um, for what I just previously mentioned to Mr. Llewellyn. And then we also do the employer verification checks for every employee um, uh, to verify that they've not been the subject of those three things that I told you about. What about their credentials in terms of their teaching credentials, their successes, some of their hurdles? So teaching credentials, we have to verify that they are certified in the state of Connecticut to teach the subject that, um, that we are hiring them for, and we have a large state report. I think we're kind of wandering into a lot of different areas here. We're getting away from fingerprints. This policy is required by the FBI, as Mrs. Maxon Canelli mentioned. Um, we need to have this policy in place for July 1. Um, I, I'm confused about We've this. We've had great detailed conversation, particularly you and I. Do you have any further comments yeah, or I questions do. on not, the fingerprinting? Yes. No, because that's going to pay. That's that's going to lead into some of my other this questions. This is a policy on I know how to read. So I'm just saying that, yes, I do. On I'm trying to understand the secu security check. Please. Please ask as long as it, and Thank I'll you. allow the questions and comments as long as it relates to the policy that's in front of us. Well, my questions and comments are about the safety of the children and how, in, how they're being taught and what. So the question that I'm trying to ask is, in terms of when data is sent back to you, I assume it's requested by you and then sent back to you? What data are you referring to? All this. Fingerprints, right. DCF. Right. Correct. It comes back to my office. Okay. When? Would, oh, sorry, what? When? Oh. Would there be, would, what would the procedure be if something came back that brought a red flag? Raised a red flag. Well, it depends on what the red flag is, but um, the first step would be to see if it's a misdemeanor or a felony. Um, we'd work with our police department to understand the charge, and we'd work to see what our next steps are with that particular employee. Okay, so the first thing would be to go to the police, you said? To understand any criminal background that comes back, yes. Okay. And usually, what is the time frame on that? It depends. It can be a week, it could be three mm, or four weeks. Depending on how busy but they are. The state police, correct. Um, and is the administration, let's say Dr. Jones and some of her team, are they made aware of this? Why you're also making the police aware of this? Anytime we have something like that come back and there are consequences for a staff member, I alert the superintendent. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So we, we were in the middle of the motion for uh, Actually, voting. Actually, excuse me, I, I won't follow up. We have already started the voting process. I allowed some additional discussion but the motion was already read for vote. I understand, and it's a clarification of what we just said, and you have allowed it to go on, so you're um, now uh, making exception Longer than I that. should have. We're going to take the vote. Oh, Very good, Phil. Thank you. We're going to take the vote. Uh, the motion that's in front of us is that the Board of Education adopt policy 4112.5 slash 4212.5, personnel certified, non-certified, security check fingerprinting. All in favor, please raise your hand. Uh, Mr. Patton, Ms. Carnell, <coughs> Mrs. Gerber, Mr. Dwyer, Ms. Pitko, Mr. Asa, Mrs. Maxon Canelli, opposed? Mrs. Lou McCormick, Mr. Llewellyn, the motion passes. Uh, it's full house now, 7 to 2. Thank you. 
So on to uh, a, a new business, approval of the amended 2017-18 calendar. The recommended motion is that the Board of Education approve the amended 1718 calendar. Do I have a motion? Mrs. Gerber, do I have a second? Mr. Acer, uh, shall we defer to the superintendent? Superintendent, please. Um, this is the calendar at the last meeting that was presented that has an additional four early release days that staff uh, want to be able to use for uh, professional development these would happen on a Tuesday so that that's the day that our staff actually stay longer and we could maximize that time um, for the staff just to have more time to work on um, everything that goes with our district improvement plan in addition um, as a reminder to the board we're trying to be as creative as we can and bring some new options to you because we are facing um, budget challenges this year and we have reduced significantly the work that we do in the summer and so we want to be able to uh, look at that in a better way we did mention at the last board meeting um, Ms. Max and Canelli had mentioned the ninth certainly if we can't have the four early release days that would be better than nothing but we are still hopeful that the board will support for early release days on those Tuesdays um, because we think they could be highly valuable okay. uh, questions or comments from board members Questions or comments from board's members? Mr. Acer. I have a few things regarding this. Um, one, I want to just bring up that I was a little taken back um, at the fact that these changes were made without the board voting on them and then posted online prior to us getting to discuss it. Um, so I, I'd like some clarification on that. Sure. Um, I also am curious as to why Tuesdays were chosen um, for half-day dismissals and why not Fridays. I'm thinking about the families in the district and I'm thinking about four extra days that are going to be a hardship on a lot of people. Um, and it doesn't matter whether they're stay-at-home parents or dual-income families. Um, I want to say that I fully support 100% as much professional development as we can give. I think the root of my issue stems from the complete elimination of the summer curriculum work and the summer PD. Um, I understand that we have um, tabled items, um, maintenance items I never like to put off, but I understand I get. Um, but things that have to do with instructional time um, and teaching time. Um, I get that the teachers need the time, but the kids do too. And I just think that um, we need to, the board needs to consider the whole big picture here. And I like um, the proposal of, you know, Columbus Day, um, if that has to be what it is. But if I could just get some answers to those couple questions, that would be great. Sure. Um, and for the early release and, and any of the senior staff, feel free to chime in if I don't answer this correctly. Um, in the past, when we have added an early release to the calendar, it did not come to the board because it did not adjust the actual instructional calendar by having an early release. Generally, most of the early releases that we have are snow day or weather related or like today. Some districts had heat days. Um, but that, that is why. Um, I fully understand now the board, if we're going to really make a, I think a creative change, would like to see that going forward. But that has not been our practice. Um, as far as Tuesdays, that's a day when our staff already stay late. Um, it's an extended day for them and for professional development so we're really maximizing that afternoon for staff and again it has no cost to the district which right now unfortunately is is important um, in the hardship to families I think that of course we always think about our families and I think right now as a district we're faced with lots of challenges and difficult decisions and I think even tonight on the agenda these are two competing interests we talk about class size and there is you know financial side to that but then you talk about professional development and you're hearing the teachers say they the classroom is overwhelming and we have a lot of initiatives and we need professional development time and unfortunately you know I was just sitting here making a list of all of the things we've talked about orchestra world language um, the aquatics program professional development we are not going to be able to stay the course doing everything that we've always done because we have to find reduction somewhere and I think that the senior staff and in 
general and worked with a very difficult budget this year. And what we brought forth for the Board of Education were things we felt like we could live with um, that weren't going to really hurt the district, like professional development. We knew we could find creative opportunities and other ways to move forward with that. Um, but again, if this is not going to be the way, then we'll have to continue to think. But I think on the agenda tonight, what you're seeing is just the first of many, many difficult you know, discussions we'll have because and the next sheet that comes up tonight, you know, we've got $2.3 million that is basically on reserve going into next year because that's what's at risk right now that could be cut between now and September. And, you, and a lot of these items you can't come back and fix after the school year starts. So I hope that answered the three. Okay, so did that answer your question? Do you have other questions or comments? Um, yeah, regarding the summer curriculum work, mm -hmm. obviously you talk about not being able to go back. Well, obviously, was the summer curriculum work being cut one of the motives for these added days or not? I think it's, it's not having the professional development time in the summer, absolutely, but then also just trying to find more professional development time to work on. You know, in, at elementary, we have rolled out a new reading. We've rolled out mathematics. Now we're talking about social studies. And it's not just elementary. It's, this is, you know, pre-K through 12. And we just need desperately more professional development time when teachers can collaborate and get together. Um, for me, personally, when I, I got to go around to a few, few places, a few schools on the 6th, that was a wonderful, actually, professional day because the bulk of the testing was over and it wasn't as stressed and pressured as you are the last week of school. But just to have time, like, to get our special education team together that day, that was, from what was shared with me, one of the first times they've been together in many years since they could remember. Okay. So thank you for your answers. And just to make a point, um, I, we, we briefly discussed this at the last meeting and, and Chairman Dwyer asked for kind of a consensus of where we all stood, but I think it's important to note moving forward that items like curriculum work should come to the board for a vote before being um, tabled. It was part of the budget. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so we have three people that wish to speak, uh, Ms. Pitko, Mrs. Gerber, and then Mrs. Max and Canelli. Can I just um, expand on that? I was unfortunately out for the last meeting. When you say curriculum lurk, would you just explain what you're referring to? Um, back in March, um, the first list of Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3 topics were discussed. And at the last two board meetings, those uh, lists were further refined for discussion with the board. And tonight, you'll see that the um, final list is there. So that's what Mr. Acer is referring to. Uh, Ms. Uh, Pitko. I'm glad Mr. Um, Acer brought this up. I was questioning at the last meeting, was, were these four days added in because we took out the curriculum work? And I, I have a huge problem with that, mostly because as a teacher, um, I know how valuable that curriculum work is. Now we're saying, because we're not going to do it in the summer, we're taking that out, we're putting this on the backs of our parents, that we're going to add, and this calendar is full of days where these students will be home. I'm just sorry, I can't support that. And I work in a district where we do get half days once a month to work in a professional learning committee. I see the value in it, but we also have curriculum summer work. Uh, Mrs. Gerber. Um, yeah, well, I guess um, since uh, Dr. Jones did bring up how successful the June 6th professional development was, that was a full day. Right. So I guess my question would be, is what downside would there be in taking Mrs. Max and Canelli's idea of having one full day on October 9th for professional development, one half day, so get rid of three of the days, and I don't know how we'd figure out which date made the most sense, and, and do it that way. Uh, is there any pressing concern that would make that a less attractive you know idea I'm just trying to get a sense of yeah. you know balance like which one would be preferable to yeah. staff you know just would they be able to get better quality PD if they had one full day to be able to just do it I, I just wanted to get a sense of that yeah I think building it in um, to the f to the four half days because it was on the Tuesday gives you a nice block of time for teachers to work together there's been a lot of discussion about you know getting our third grade teachers together at one school site together and doing some more creative opportunities across the district so it, when you spread it out because you can only do so much in a day because teachers also it's overload I mean you can only have so much learning but like I say if it's an October day and you would agree to a 
another half day, anything additional that we can get is welcome. And even if we were having the summer work, I think you would still see this coming forward because we just have so much going on right now as a district. Mrs. Maxson Canelli. Um, so I, again, I, I recognize that there's still several hands up wanting this discussion, so I won't do this as a motion yet. Um, I'll let the discussion continue, but just to um, signal my intent um, that I would indeed like to um, change this so that October 9th will be added as a school day. Uh, a final school day will be then um, extended to June 13th, with, so that October 9th would be the full PD day, um, and that the elimination of October now I did pick the date at random but eliminating October 17th eliminating January 30th eliminating March 13th and eliminating May 22nd as the half days leaving in December 12th um, I will admit that I picked December 12th a little bit randomly but I do think it's more valuable in the first semester than the second um, the only date that had been specifically referenced at the last meeting is having a, a specific value um, uh, Dr. Boyce did reference that the S the review of SAT data on May 22nd is one thing that could be of use there um, however having done that I think that can be done in their regular faculty meetings which occur on on Tuesday not that that wouldn't also be a good use of it but um, so my Picking of December 12th, if well, under normal circumstances, I say you've got to put the motion on the table before you make the argument. Except I'm not making an argument. I this is my discussion, so I'm putting out there. I am going to, yes. um, but I just wanted to, um, as I said, I before I make a motion, I think it's only fair that others who have comments have the chance to do so. Llewellyn, uh, thank you. Uh, through the chair to the superintendent, uh, I, the summer curriculum work. Does that include all teachers or does that include a few teachers writing curriculum? It does not include all teachers. Okay, so the, the, all teachers benefit from the PD, whereas the summer work is a few teachers getting paid extra to write curriculum. Is that correct? That's correct. So I think we're mixing apples and oranges here. So I think that we should probably stop the discussion on the summer work as being correlated at all to what's on the table here because this is PD for all. Whereas the summer work, I think, is, is curriculum related. Is that correct? Correct. Thank you for the clarification. Any other board members wish to make a comment? Mr. Patton. Piggybacking on what Mr. Llewellyn was just saying, um, um, I don't know how many of you remember this, but during budget time, uh, I was one who heavily lobbied for more professional development. And as a matter of fact, Dr. Jones and I had several conversations offline about you know budgetary wise you know what would that cost and we can't really add specific days and you know what what could we do and I know this has been in the back of her mind even before the state budget cuts so um, I think I don't want to speak for the superintendent but um, I think this was along those lines of we wanted to add more professional development for teachers during the school year and especially during that first semester um, because teachers need as much as we can give them so while I am not married to any specific days, you know, moving things back to October 9th, um, you know, uh, I certainly understand, you know, families and you know, maybe a Friday is better, but uh, if we get an extra two hours out of our staff on a Tuesday, um, then that's, you know, almost, uh, you know, 30% of their, their day if we had a full time, uh, rather a full day that we had the kids off of instead of a half a day. So I think I like the Tuesday idea if we can benefit from that. Um, but I'm not married specifically to specific days. But I do like the number of days that have been added. Mrs. Maxson Canelli, uh, you asked for comments from board members on your uh, idea that you might put forward. Any other board members wish to uh, comment on that? Mrs. Lou McCormick. Through the chair to the superintendent. So in considering um, Mrs. Canelli's proposal, is a full day, the 9th plus the 12th, in your opinion, equivalent or less than or more than your current proposal? Um, in all honesty, I was trying to follow the proposal because I was thinking um, if we're taking if we're taking away or adding a day that wasn't actually added, you're taking you're looking at a different early release day. I really need Miss um, Parks uh, to come forward to Mr. Cummings to make sure we're not um, changing a day that has impacts in other ways because some of these are utilized whether it's for grading or lots of different things. And while they're getting settled, can I ask a just a procedural question? Does this need to be approved at this meeting or? 
Uh, we generally try and get the calendar out uh -huh. as soon as possible for parents planning and whatnot. For planning for vacations. Uh, and like. There's no uh, legal requirement to do it tonight, but I think Just we'd like to get you. it out. Yeah. Dr. Parks, I believe that they were asking about October 17th, and I just wanted to clarify that that wasn't okay. Yeah, so um, the thing about October is that if you notice, the 17th is just for elementary and middle school. The 11th is the high school's half day. And the high school, uh, we started this two years ago because PSATs are done in the morning and everybody's pretty much wiped out. <laughs> We did it once with keeping the kids in school all day. They were not really productive in the afternoon, so we created an afternoon of professional development for the teachers and the kids. Or the kids went home and the teachers. So um, I'm just not sure how practical it would be if you eliminate the 17th. You're still keeping a half day in for the high school in October. Completely different. Um, I don't know if that answers that question. I'm not sure what all the questions are. So, so my question had been, I think the proposal, and correct me if I'm wrong, was a full day on the 9th? Is that what you were proposing? So no, no classes, full day of professional development. So full day on the October 9th, and then as well December 12th, half or partial half, day. Half day. Early release. Right. And those two days then, one full day, one half day, my question is, is that equivalent or not? to the series of different early dismissals throughout the course of the year. Which, which would be more effective in being able to train or pass on more information? So in about two weeks, you will be our chief academic officer. So I would imagine you are in a good position to answer that. I'm in a position. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the, to, to answer your question and to, um, to allude to, to the distinction that Mr. Llewellyn made, um, the curriculum work, a significant portion of the curriculum work was reduced this summer uh, in response to the uh, budget issues we've been facing since the fall. Um, what, one of the things that also we've looked at to eliminate in, in uh, subsequent iterations of the budget, if you recall um, in the budget one of the things I initially proposed was training for the elementary staff grades three, four, five in the summer to implement the new social studies curriculum. And I want to say that I'm going to take the elementary social studies curriculum as only an example of some of how this plays out, and I'm going to answer your question. So we're implementing in each of the grades three, four, five, three units. The curriculum will get worked on this summer because that's an obligation we gave to the board last year when you agreed that we would put it off a year. Um, we will get that written. What I'm deeply concerned about is the implementation of that curriculum and the support of our staff going forward. So. And a date in October and a date in December, while would help us, is not necessarily the help at the time it's needed for the units. So you're going to see a new unit in grades 3, 4, and 5 implemented, say, or mid-October, another one probably around January, another one in April. Because in the elementary, as you know, they alternate often with the science. The positioning of the half days would allow us during the course of the year to bring together the grade three teachers, the grade four teachers, the grade five teachers to work together to understand how to best teach the units. It, what, what I have always been concerned about, and, and our, some of our speakers, our teachers spoke to this earlier tonight when they were talking about class sizes, it's one thing to write a really strong curriculum. It means nothing if we don't equip them with the abilities to teach it. And to give them, and the particular thing that they've asked for is the collaboration and corroboration amongst them to share ideas and to bring it forward. So that iteration of those days throughout the year, whether it's this or data teamwork at the high school, the SRBI work we want to implement this year, that continual coming back and improving practice and growing together is the work, is, is the value in the work. So can I summarize to say that you believe that this is a better assist in the implementation of the curriculum by doing it over periods of time rather than just one day. We had a lot of discussion in central office about different alternatives and this was the one we brought forward. Okay. Other comments or should I go to the public? I'll, uh, Ms. Connelly and then Ms. Uh, Ms. Carnell. Um, a couple of things. Um, it, it would be Th there are a few observations about the calendar. Um, 
First of all, I have to say I didn't agree with the October 11th PSAT early release either. Um, as someone who teaches students in that position, um, I would very much prefer that they stay in school. We'll, teachers will get something out of them, but that's not the argument for today. Um, I would say that, just a reminder in terms of this, December, having October 9th and December 12th would then address uh, Mr. Cummings' point regarding giving an additional opportunity. A full day would give um, tremendous opportunities for several things to address. Um, I had thought eliminating October 17th, given that it's then followed by three more elementary school early release days, that was more of a nod to the parents um, than thinking that that was strategically of different value to staff. Um, but we also have the addition of February 15th. Um, that is now a new early release day, for example, for high school. Um, so it just seems, and I'll be honest, having been in, now again, this is my high school is restricted to, my, my, excuse me, my experience is restricted to high school, but I'm fairly familiar with the value of professional development, not that my district doesn't do marvelous professional development at all times, um, but there's definitely a different value to having that chunk of time in fall compared with what can be accomplished in the spring. And so that's why I, again, I still am favoring the October 9th. Um, it is very disruptive for families to have the additional professional, excuse me, to have the additional early release days. And I s just still question the value of May and March, um, to be quite honest. And obviously I know that there will be some more work that's done. Um, to Mr. Ace's point earlier, um, which Mr. Llewellyn brought up. I know that we as a board were correlating the summer curriculum work with this professional development because that was the conversation at our last meeting. The two got conflated there and thus I perfectly understand it carrying over to this. Um, so as I said, I recognize the idea that more professional development is of value. I also know that there is, that's actually one question I did have to uh, Dr. Jones. I know the indication of budget was about $148,000. I believe that was the number yes. um, for the summer curriculum work. So that leaves us with what is being done this summer. Because um, I know some teachers have already been tapped for that. And so what, what work will be done? Can we defer that question to when we talk about the list of items? If, if, if I could that. just find, is it social studies, for example? Um, there, at the element, I can speak best to the elementary level at this point. Um, it is social studies. We are, and because we are working uh, at the elementary level to integrate our curriculum, um, there will be some language arts work as well to realign some units to support the social studies instruction. Okay. Ms. Carl. I wanted to expand upon that because there has been a back and forth. What is the budget for the summer, or has it totally been taken away in terms of curriculum? That is on the next, uh, another topic, but if you look in your package, you'll find the list in closure number six, and it's listed um, about halfway down the, a little bit more than halfway down, summer curriculum work, and that's listed at $148,748, which is what would not be done. Uh, I'm sorry, what? I didn't hear the end of what you were saying. These are items that would be on hold pending the state action. Right, and I, that's where I was kind of going with this. Um, I know that the state mandates certain changes, and I know that science is one of them. Will the budget, will science be affected by the budget, and when is it expected to um, hit the, um, shall we say, summer vacation? And I was going to say Miss Parks may. Because uh, right, wait, right now you are, you have a different name. <laughs> I do? No. Ms. No, Parks, Chief Ms. Academic Parks, Officer. Please, uh, <laughs> please answer the question. In training. Uh, the science curriculum is essentially written. Mm -hmm. It was just slowed down for implementation. So there really doesn't need to be additional curriculum writing. There will need to be more professional, more money and more time for professional development when it is actually implemented. But, but there is no need for the science faculty to be working on curriculum writing during this coming summer. So when, we'll, well, there's no need for curriculum writing, but I know that there's been discussion about changing some of the um, 
times when certain classes are given, whether it's ninth grade, whether it's sequencing. tenth. Sequencing. I'm sorry, what? The sequencing of the courses. Thank you. That was the word. When will that be discussed? Uh, uh, let me, uh, if I know that I you're not going to like this. I'm continuing, continuing with my question, Ms. Parks. Staff. I know you're not going to like this, but what else is th there? this is not the agenda item for the science curriculum. So, Ms. Parks, please answer that last question, but it's let's stay on the calendar professional well, development. Well, no, and I appreciate what you're saying, Ms. Chairman Dwyer, but I think it has to do with other pieces of the curriculum. That's why it's it's Every all item in the school district can be related to another, but our agenda item is the four professional days. Wait, look on the bright side. I'm not going to start with my Labor Day issue on the calendar. Right. Ms. Parks, could you answer the question? Uh, I believe that whole, uh, that's part of the reason I believe that we've sort of stalled on the implementation of the science curriculum. There's still discussion being done. There are some other thoughts around how to implement the science curriculum. So I believe it's in a holding pattern. Those things are being discussed and I think it will probably happen soon. And that has to do with the state state. Through the chair to Dr. Title, will there be a date um, <laughs> in terms of the state if you're talking about the science curriculum, I'm also Park talking to Dr. Jones. The last question on the science curriculum. I'm talking to Dr. Jones about the science. Do you have any more questions on the yes, professional Yes, I'm talking to Dr. Aid. Jones. Through the chair, Through the Dr. Chair, Jones. Is it about the science curriculum? Yes. Then I'll defer that till we have an agenda item for the science curriculum. No. Any further questions on the professional development days? Other comments that people wish to make? Uh, uh, can I uh, ask whether you want to go to the public before we make the motion? Sure. Or okay. Sure. So, and Mr. Patton wants to make a comment before we go to the public. Just one quick question, uh, I, I guess through the chair to Dr. Jones. Um, is Election Day um, an option to do anything, or we're not allowed to? They do professional They do do pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Because we didn't mark it. Oh, so no. I saw. I saw that we had it off. I didn't. I was looking specifically for that, and I was looking on the bottom. But I sorry, never. So that is still a full day of professional development in November. Is that it? Yep. Yeah, that's okay, it. Thank you. Uh, so let me go to the public for any comments on the current proposal that's in front of us. Uh, if Mrs. Maxson Canelli makes a motion to amend, uh, we'll also go to the public for that vote. But does the public wish to make any comments on the main motion, which is to uh, add the four professional development day half days? Uh, please come forward, state your name and address. Suzanne Miska, 123 Rygate Road. Um, I, I, I appreciate the comments. I appreciate the caring about the parents. Um, with this budget that is in front of us, parents and um, teaching staff and administration, we all have to work together. And, you know, my suggestion might be that, you know, um, there have been commentaries under, under the past superintendent of micromanaging the administration. And so I think that um, Dr. Jones and her staff have done an excellent job of trying to make this work as best that they can. You know, my suggestion might be that on these half-day scenarios that the PTAs might be able to offer something um, to those children whose parents are working, um, something that allows the kids even more time to get to know each other, um, and something educational or fun that um, brings units together. You won't have that at the high school. Um, you know, once we know we have a half day, we're booking out, our cars are on, and we're out of there. Um, but uh, for the younger kids, I mean, that would be an option. Um, it would be make great will of the PTAs to reach out to help fill the void um, and support the staff so that they can get the um, information and time that they need. Thank you. Thank you very much. Who else would like to come forward? Please state your name and address. Raina Holinsky, Dwight Elementary. I just want to support the additional four half days. I think spreading them out throughout the year is really beneficial, uh, especially with the social studies curriculum that's coming in. So I support that. Thank you. Who else? Uh, please come forward. State your name and address. Lisa Davey, Fairfield, Connecticut. I, too, support professional development days extra, however they are configured, because I agree with what the teachers have said, which is the amount of mandates that these teachers have to do um, are ridiculous. <laughs> and they need as much support as they can get. The other piece of that is because I have a high school student. He came home this year with a lot of textbooks that sat 
there from September and went back in June. These teachers are, right, are creating their own curriculum versus using textbooks, which is how it used to be. And so it's a lot more work for these teachers, so give them as much help as they can get. Thank you very much. Anybody else wish to come forward? Please state your name and address or position. Bob Spoller, I'm president of the uh, FEA. Um, I also support Dr. Jones' recommendation, and I do not feel that a, a day in October is anywhere near equivalent to spreading out four and a half days. We have all kinds of things going on during the year, initiatives that are being planned. Uh, spring, in particular, is a very heavy data collection uh, period where you're analyzing student progress throughout the year. Uh, we're starting a new SRBI initiative. We'll be looking at student data and deciding what adjustments to be made at the high school, especially at Ward. We have a NEASC um, certification coming up uh, starting in the spring of 2020. We'll be doing all that preparation for that starting next school year, and it'll take us at least a couple, a year and a half to get ready for that visit. So um, I am very much in support for these four half days. They will be used constructively and uh, well at all levels of the school district, and I think you'll find that most of all teachers would agree with that. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, uh, any further comments? And uh, I, I know Dr. Title wants uh, Dr. Title, my <laughs> deepest apologies. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's almost as bad as uh, saying Mr. Calabrese, <laughs> which Mr. Calabrese I did once earlier in the meeting. Uh, my apologies to our superintendent, Dr. Jones. Hi, Please state your name and address. Yes, Tara Fonseca, 78 Deer Run Road. Um, I'm also an educator not in this district um, so I see how someone mentioned before that these two issues of the calendar and the class size are very intertwined um, I think that um, being a river field parent um, with two two classes um, or grade levels with students who are on this bubble year uh, that they might be calling it that are close to these extra sections um, as a teacher and a parent, I want nothing more than for the policy to remain the same. But I also think, uh, no, I know, I'm, okay. right, I'm tying it together. <laughs> I also think that the teachers, everyone keeps talking about they want the low class sizes. I also think it is just as important as everyone, or a lot of people, um, especially Dr. Jones has said, the, the initiatives the teachers are under based on the education climate in the country. Um, being a competitive district, I think that they do need the time to be effective to keep the class sizes low, whether they have the high or low numbers. But I think that having them both together, the low class size with the training that they need to roll out the math, the science, the reading, the social studies that has all come in the last few years is critical for Fairfield to remain a very competitive district in the area and in the state and the country, for that matter. Thank you very much. Anybody else from the public wish to come forward to talk about the uh, additional uh, professional development days? Will you state your name and address? Jennifer Leeper, 75 Sherman Court. Um, I know there's no easy decisions on where to cut in this fiscal year, but I just wanted to say there's a tremendous amount of change in education, as we know, and specifically in this district, as such a competitive district. And we have very high standards for our teachers. So, and I'm interpreting PD as not only learning new material, but also working with their grade teams or their sub same subject teams um, to tweak curriculum, lessons plans, analyzing their students' data, all of those things. and without time to do these things and make improvements accordingly we're putting an incredible burden on our teachers to either to do this on their own time and knowing our teachers they'll they'll spend late nights as they already do doing all of these things um, saying in saying that I'm in support for as much PD as we can give our teachers and specifically the four half days um, I come from as a school administrator from a high achieving district in New York and we had half days every single Wednesday for teacher um, PD and I'm only mentioning that as to say this time is really important for teachers to be able to actually implement all of these things we're asking them to do and uh, make those changes in, in real time so that their students are seeing the benefits of that um, 
not at the end of the year, but as, as frequently as, as possible. Um, and so I just urge the board to really consider how much professional development is necessary for teachers to meet all these rigorous standards, and especially going forward, not to only this year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else wish to come forward? I don't see anybody standing up, so back to the board. I'll only make one comment. I have been known to generally defer to the professional judgment of our superintendent and her staff. Uh, I am sure that different districts around the country have different approaches to how to do professional development, but I am supportive of the proposal that the superintendent made because the superintendent made it after considered discussion with various professionals on her team and with teachers. Um, so that's my position at the moment. Anybody wish to uh, make further comments? I'll go after uh, Mr. Patton, followed by Mrs. Max and Canelli. Um, and, and then uh, uh, Doc, uh, Dr. Jones would like to make a comment as well. So one, two, and then Dr. Jones. So comment slash question, um, I guess assumedly now, uh, before Mrs. Max Canelli would like to make her uh, proposal, is it better now to ask um, on specific dates, for example, like the May 22nd or March 13th dates, um, why we want or, or what would plan to be done on those specific dates and why those are good ideas versus waiting for Mrs. Max and Canelli to make her good. proposal. Could you, uh, state that those dates because I'm not sure that March 22nd is a date that May is May 22nd oh. and March 13th. So um, the three days I would like to have information on in terms of what specifically would be done. We've already discussed October really is we're really October 17th, um, the March 13th, and the May 22nd. I guess the May 22nd we've already discussed that's more okay. reviewing of the, the test scores. So what topics are likely to be covered on those three days? Right. In other words, okay. yeah. why is it imperative that we have a, a date in March on March 13th as opposed to not or moving that somewhere else? Mm -hmm. I would say right now it's not more about what will actually be done on the day because we still have a lot of planning work. We have a new director of innovation starting. We have a new uh, chief academic officer. We need to work with our entire principal team to make sure everything is mapped out for the year. What I will say is the dates were strategically placed by looking at the entire calendar. You know, when is testing taking place? When do we have conferences? It's That's why I say you have to be very careful about just moving one of those pink dates to another date because it could be impacting testing or something else. It took a whole team of people to look at this calendar to figure out where we could find four days that would have as least impact to families because we thought about that, trying to spread things out and then also strategically be placed where they would be useful for us throughout the year. Okay, and in, um, in recognition of what, again, what Ms. Max and Canelli is, uh, I'm, I'm assuming she's gonna propose and moving some things around. I'd just like to know the impact before or after that she uh, makes her proposal on the October 9th full day uh, versus taking away, I guess, the 17th half day. Um, and again, really that March 13th day in terms of why do we want something in March? What's the, I know you're saying you, we're not sure, but it sounds like the staff, maybe through Mr. Cummings, you could give me an idea why do we want a day in March? We were trying to make sure, I mean, as you heard, in some districts they do this every week. Some of them they do it once a month. We were trying to make sure at least once a month, other than the month of September, we had a day for professional development all Just throughout the whole calendar. To spread it out. To spread it out and make sure it's, because you can only do so much in one day. Um, and I think Mr. Cummins, what, what he was alluding to also with the social studies, that's work that has to be done all year long. Okay. All right, fair enough. And perhaps uh, when Mrs. if Mrs. Maxson Canelli moves forward with an amendment, uh, Dr. Jones may want to comment on this day or that day in response to Mr. Patton's question. Mrs. Maxson Canelli. Um, one thing that I think it's worth uh, clarifying for the public: uh, our faculty does have professional development every single Tuesday. Um, every Tuesday is faculty meetings. Now, obviously, it's a much shorter chunk of time. I absolutely acknowledge that. But every Tuesday is a meeting contractually that they stay longer um, where development of varying natures, whatever, um, sometimes determined by the building, sometimes determined by the district. Um, I will, I mean, I, I'm, I'm now, of course, I recognize there's, get, there's pros and cons to both. The one other thing that had really been appealing to me about October 9th is that right now there is only one day in August there would be that one day in October, 
there would be that one day in November and that one day in February. Those are four days only of full day professional development. And when, and I, I'll admit, I'm also coming at this from a policy point of view. When I think of all of the things that all staff needs to be trained in, all staff have to be, um, you know, and, and this has to be signed off on by building administrators. Um, that too is something where I just saw a value to having an additional full day that there is so much more that you can do there and that you can pull together um, all of these grades, all of these subject teachers, um, you know, pre-K through 12. Um, and so that's where I had seen that value in four full days plus uh, the few early releases plus the fact that they have every single Tuesday. It gave a balance to the type of professional development that could then be due um, because I think everyone recognizes that there are certain things that just can't be done um, either in only those Tuesday afternoons or even only on the early releases. Um, so I guess you know, at this point then I'd, I'd want the input of the board so I'm going to move ahead with the amendment recognizing absolutely that there are pros and cons to both. Um, I am not for a minute discounting the comments from the public. I think that was valuable input and so, but the only way I can gauge how the board feels about this is to move forward with it. I'll put the motion on the table. So I'm making the motion to add October 9th as a full professional day. And do it slowly Change. so our secretary yep. makes sure she gets it. I'll wait, as I tell my students, I'll wait till your pen stops moving. Um, adding, moving the last day to June 13th, and then eliminating the early release, obviously open to amendment that may come from Dr. Jones, eliminating working from the end of the calendar up of May 22nd, March 13th, January 30th. And, and then, October 17th, but I recognize Ms. Park's comment there about the, the balance there. Is that in or out of your proposal? So eliminating it. And eliminate October, October 17th. 17th. Uh, is that clear? Okay. Can you repeat that again? Or can the secretary? Uh, the secretary will read the down. amendment to the motion, which I presume uh. goes at the uh, end of the, the motion that says uh, amend the 27-18 calendar as per the following sentence. Yeah. Uh, move to add uh, October 9th as a full professional development day, moving the last day of school to June 13th, and eliminate early dismissal days on May 22nd, March 13th, January 30th, October 17th. Okay, is that clear, Mr. Patton? So uh, in addition to the prior argument, do you have any further comments that you wish to make? Is there a second? Mr. Asa. Any further comment that you wish to make, Mrs. Maxson Canali? No. Mr. Asa, any comments? Says the person who seconded it? No. Other comments from board members? Mr. Llewellyn. Um, just so I can clarify, you've eliminated four early dismissals, or four half days of PD. You've added a full day on October 9th, but you've also extended the calendar by a full day. So in essence, you're taking away four half days of PD because you're extending the calendar. So that's not having an impact. So you've disregarded. So you've got a full day, but you also extended the calendar. So that has no impact. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. So you did that. You could still leave the, f the, the, the four, add the one, extend the calendar. In the sense, you, you're having less PD. You're having it all on one day, but you're also extending the calendar. So people are, the kids are losing an extra day off. Um, and and it, you know, I think other than the, than the chair, you're the person who probably says most, uh, you know, trust the administration here. I mean, you heard the whole central office saying they sat down, they worked through this. Um, that this works for the rollout of the new curriculum, uh, or at least the, the, the social studies aspects and the others that they're writing. Um, so, you know, I don't think I can support the amendment. Other comments that board members wish to make? Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, I think just about everybody has spoken, so Mr. Patton followed by Mrs. Eileen Lou McCormick. I guess I can support part, but not all of this. I'm not in favor of taking the four half days away. Um, I would certainly be willing to swap the 
ninth full day for the 17th half day. Um, and if anybody has the math uh, through the chair to Dr. Jones, what with the calendar being proposed, how many school days do we have? Well, I see my staff out there calculating and thinking, so if you'd like to come forward or. And, and while you're coming forward, I, I, I think I'll remind Mr. Patton of his earlier comment on another subject. Uh, doing this kind of stuff on the fly at a board meeting is always, what'd you say? Dangerous. Mr. Dangerous. Parks. But we knew that we were going to do this ahead of time. Um, so at least it was my understanding that that would happen. Yeah. I, I believe I understand what Mrs. Kennelly's motion is um, in terms of by creating the professional development day on October 9th, we would have staff coming to work and students not coming, and the adding the day in June is to give students back the same number of school days. The problem with that is we've created one additional day for staff to work, and we that's not built into their contract. That's where I was going with that. So that's problematic. That's why. So to actually do what you're suggesting, I believe we would not be able to add the additional day, and it would actually result in a loss of a student instructional day by making October 9th a full PD day. Um, Does that answer your question, Mr. Patton? Yes, I'm not entirely done, I guess. So. Um, No, I'll, I'll ask it later. I'm, I'm not in favor of the proposal of the amendment as is. Okay. Mrs. Eileen Lou McCormick, do you defer it? I think Mrs. Maxson Canelli wants to comment on that exchange. Well, considering I put this out there two weeks ago and this is the first time I'm hearing of that, then of course I will withdraw the amendment. Well, the amendment belongs to the board. Is there any uh, objection from the board to uh, withdraw the amendment? Uh, seeing none, by uh, unanimous consent, the motion. The amendment is uh, withdrawn. Back to the main motion. We have gone to the public on the uh, main motion. Um, and the amendment was withdrawn. Any final comments from the board on the main motion? Any final comments from the board on the main motion? Mr. Patton. Oh, no. Mrs. Eileen Lou McCormick, you were deferring. So do you still wish to make a comment? No, I, I, I'm fine with the proposal because I think the academic officer at this point seems to have touched base with staff and teachers co have come up and confirmed that they believe that this is going to be the most helpful and um, efficient. So um, I'm supportive. Even though this is a deviation from what we've done in the past, I think it's good to try new things and see Mr. if it works. Mr. Patton, do you have any further comment or not? Um, yeah, I'd still at least like to discuss the, the notion. Um, I understand the rationale from uh, having the October 17th date. Um, and if we switch that to the full day on the 9th, we would still, you know, we would lose a you know, half day of instructional time. Um, but I still think, you know, again, trying to adhere to parent schedules, we've talked about yeah. that date and time of year a lot. And I, I suppose I would like to make an amendment to. Yeah. Um, so it depends on what your amendment is, because, but go ahead, please write. Please, please uh, speak. Was there a reason again why we can't have the thing on the on the ninth? Is that we are? No, no, no. Please make your amendment. To remove the half day on the seventeenth and add a full day what on the ninth of October. Remove the half day on October seventeenth. And add full day on the ninth. Of professional development. Okay. Is there a second for that amendment? Half day instructions. Is there a second for that amendment? I see no second, so the motion dies for lack of a second. Fair enough. So, uh, what is uh, in front of us at the moment is the original proposal that Dr. Jones and her staff put forth. Um, we've gone to the public, so let me. Sure, Mrs. Gerber. Yeah, I, I just I I am going to support this, and, but I just want to make clear that one of the reasons why this was an agenda item tonight is because 
this dramatic a change to the calendar, I believe, should be approved by the Board of Education. So I don't think it's necessarily a matter of anyone trying to micromanage anything. It's simply us trying to do our job. We approved a calendar. It's been changed. We should approve the amended calendar. So I you know, thank the staff for putting this before us. But I will also say, two weeks ago, Mrs. Maxim Canelli made a statement saying that she wanted to make these changes and it would have been very helpful if we had known we would have saved everyone a whole lot of time if we had simply gotten that information about October 9th not being possible um, uh, I agree with the uh, mrs. Gerber's comment that that our new superintendent uh, wasn't clear that the calendar is uh, something that the board votes on and therefore this quote significant change I won't call it a major change the board would want to talk about it and act on it. I think Mr. Asa brought that up. I think Dr. Jones is aware of that. And so the reason that it's on the agenda today is because two weeks ago, board members chatted about it and said, we really ought to put this on as a, an agenda item. So the motion in front of us is that the Board of Education approve the amended 2017-2018 calendar as shown in enclosure number three. All in favor, please raise your hand. It is unanimous after very good discussion. Thank you very much. <laughs> Food Services Program and Financial Summary. So who do we have here that wish to talk about food service and do you have any comments that you wish to make? At the beginning. Doreen Moped. Fair enough. And they have a PowerPoint, I think, right? And, and do you have a PowerPoint that we have to move for? Okay. 